Hi, I'm Jeff Davis. On today's podcast, you're going to be enlightened, educated, and entertained. We'll have some fun, and we'll provide an option to help you stay healthy. Without further ado, let's hit the wine road. We're uh, getting our hands on more and more import wines. We have a, a new head of procurement at the Wine Spies, Agent Noir is his name. And he is a, a wine educator, and uh, the quality of our selections has gone up since I've handed that job over to him. Just realized that as everybody was kind of getting to that point of realization that life would, would eventually get back to some form of normalcy, that putting a smile on people's face combined up with some wine drinking might be the solution to a multitude of problems. Today, you'll hear about the Wine Spies online website that offers a different wine each day at a discounted price that is worthy of consuming. The chosen wines are the result of extensive intel retrieved by the wine spies. I talk with the founder, Agent Red, about their many years of success. And this entrepreneur is also involved with Halo Masks, an incredibly safe mask that is easier to breathe through. These masks can truly be lifesavers. Unwittingly, he discovered that by pure serendipity. He was so impressed with the uniquely designed mask, he felt it was important to make it available in the U.S. Then you'll hear about another timely creation, TP Reserve Wines. Napa Valley winemaker Grant Long Jr. felt it was necessary to deliver a little bit of levity to our COVID-affected community by providing his version of the much-sought-after TP. Hence, TP Reserve Wines. Don't knock it until you hear about it. The efforts of his team are truly impressive. Also, another Wine Uncorked feature is on the way. Now, let's meet up with Agent Red of the Wine Spies. Who are the Wine Spies? How do they procure such great deals on incredible wine? Your mission, should you decide to accept it, is to stay tuned to discover the answers to these questions. Now I'm catching up with my past as I present some mystery and intrigue as I speak once again with Agent Red of Wine Spies. Agent Red, thank you for taking the time out of your active life to talk with me again today. Hey, Jeff. It's so good to be back with you. Thanks. Yeah, you know, looking back, it reminded me that you were on my first show back in October of 2013. Your very first show? Yeah, my very first show. Oh, what an honor. Yeah. I think the reason I reached out to you is because at that time, I was one of your operatives. Indeed you were. Hopefully you still are. <laughs> I do still purchase, definitely. We'll get into okay. that a little bit yeah. later. But and you and uh, your partner, Agent White, started this project back in 2007. And that deserves a hearty congratulations for uh, successfully continuing your operation these many years. Thank you. Yeah, it's nice to be the old guys in the space. Uh, we've seen a couple of flash retailers come and go, but you know we've... We've stayed the course and, uh, you know, only improved and, and grown. Well, you say a few, but, uh, yeah, there are quite a few uh, online wine dealers who have entered the game since you began, uh, but you have remained relevant. Yeah, it's it's nice to be here, and you know, we're super proud of the perhaps 600 wineries that we've worked with over these years and, uh, you know, put together some pretty incredible offers for our for our operatives. So it's great to still be here and, and be serving our, our very dedicated audience. And we should uh, point out that you call your, more or less, your wine club members, uh, those who have joined the Wine Spies, you refer to them as your operatives. They are our operatives and our family at this point. Yeah, yeah. Well, I could get into it, but let's go over this again, and uh, why don't you share with my listeners how the Wine Spies operates and why the covert element is so important. Yeah, so the Wine Spies, uh, you know, now 13 years in, have access to some really incredible wines. We get our hands on, on wines from all, all manner of wineries, big and small, hidden gem wineries, boutique wineries, and then, you know, bigger brands that, that folks know and love. And, uh, you know, we, we're we able to secure stuff that's maybe not even in release yet or has... Uh, we're able to raid the libraries of certain wineries and, and get our hands on stuff that's not even available for sale and everything in between. We really have a, a really wide selection and at prices that are usually, you know, 25 to, gosh, as much as 70% off. Uh, we had an Opus One offering recently. We had a, uh, we have a Heidsick champagne offering upcoming. We really get our hands on some really incredible wines. We're 
super proud of that. Well, I had to look today, and you have a 2015 Robert Craig Howell Mountain Merlot with a 51% savings. You know, for $49, yeah. that's a classic Napa Valley Mountain Merlot, which is a steal. I love those Robert Craig wines. They're among my very favorites. And what made me think of you guys again recently was I came across, um, you had a 2015 Piazzo Barolo from Italy. And, you know, Barolos are made from Nebbiolo grapes and some of Italy's most well-known wines. And uh, that was a, a deal I couldn't pass up, so I had to get it and uh, just love that wine. Great. Yeah, I hope you enjoy that one. We're, we're uh, getting our hands on more and more import wines. We have a, a new head of procurement at the Wine Spies, Agent Noir is his name. And he is a, a wine educator and a decades-long experienced uh, wine buyer himself. And mm. uh, the, the quality of our selections has gone up since I've handed that job over to him. I was really gonna, happy to have him on board. Oh, I bet. Because I was going to mention that I thought when uh, I was uh, an operative back in 2012, 13 or so, uh, you were presenting mostly Northern California or California wines, but now you are definitely getting into the uh, international realm. Definitely. Yeah, you know, we still are very California heavy because here we are. We're right in the heart of Sonoma County, right next door to Napa, just a little bit north of Monterey County and San Luis Obispo, where some incredible wines come from. So, yeah, we're trying to branch out and trying to expand the selection all the time. My listeners have heard me mention a few times how the wine drinking public has been very supportive during these sobering times and not only uh, with their wine drinking habits, but in supporting the wine industry. And uh, you confess to me, your operation has experienced uh, some incredible gains this past quarter. Yeah, I mean, we were on the rise before that. Uh, we, we kind of retooled and have introduced a bunch of new features pre-coronavirus, and that helped to fuel a bunch of, a bunch of our growth and, and helped to introduce the wine spies to a, a whole new audience of people. But uh, when COVID hit, as you mentioned, you know, wine industry-wide sales have been up, I think, just under 50%, and we are up uh, over 200%. At this point, um, it, that's attributable to a couple of things. We again, we have some really just amazing offers lately and, and upcoming, and also we have a new feature at the Wine Spies called Lockers. And previous to Lockers, in order to get free shipping, a customer would have to buy six bottles or more to get to that free shipping threshold. Uh, now, our operatives can purchase a, a single bottle or a couple bottles at a time and put those into a locker which we store at our temperature controlled warehouse until that locker is, is filled up with 12 bottles, at which time it ships to them for free. So that's really helped as well. It gives people a lot more flexibility. It, it lets people take more chances, you know, buying a single bottle rather than having to be forced into six bottles if they wanted to get to that free shipping level. And uh, that's really been a boost as well. Yeah, that's a fantastic idea because uh, as you're intimating, uh, you can just slowly be buying and finding some really cool stuff, and, and it kind of intrigues you and gets you interested in getting to that point where you can finally go and pick up that wine. Exactly. Yeah, I think more than half of our orders right now are locker orders. And obviously, you have your operatives. They have to use their spy skills to break into the locker, right? <laughs> uh, indeed. In fact, I'm going to give you a little tease and tell you that we are producing our first wine upcoming, and that wine is going to be called Enigma you know, in the, in the spy mm -hmm. parlance. Mm -hmm. That wine will have a special coded message on the cork. And I won't tell you what that coded message does or how to decode it, but yeah, we're going to, be going to engage people even deeper into the spy realm. Wow, your own wine spies brand, huh? Yeah, in fact, this is an incredible wine. It's a, a mountain Cabernet from Napa. I'm not going to tell you much more than that. I won't tell you who made the wine or what vineyard it came from but uh, people are going to be blown away by this wine. Wow. You know, I got to tell you, I yeah. talk with uh, winemakers and owners quite a bit, as you know, and one of the hardest things to do is to come up with a name that hasn't already been taken, and I can't believe you got Enigma. Incredible, right? We were, we were <laughs> yeah. pretty shocked and very, very pleased. Yeah. I mean, people, they spend months trying to get something approved by the TTB and uh you get a great name Indeed. for a wine, and you go to use it, and, you, and they say, no, you can't use that. Already been taken. Yeah. Wow. Well, congratulations. I'm looking forward to that. So would that be something that will be you. just offered on occasion, like some of the other wines, or would it always be available? Uh, we'll see. You know, this could be the start of a beautiful program. Uh, we have plans to do two wines at first, a Cabernet, and I won't tell you what the other one is, but uh, that's <laughs> going to be released around the same time. 
and we'll see how that goes. We think it's going to be very successful because, again, the, the fruit is from a, a very famous vineyard. The guy who made the wine, equally famous and uh, very, very sought after, very, very cult following for, for both the vineyard and that winemaker. So we're really, very, very happy that we were able to pull together such an incredible wine. And, of course, you know, as per usual, we will offer that wine at a really great price. Well, I think these uh, the relationships that you're building is a testament to your professionalism and how you're handling your company. If you were just uh, throwing up wines at a cheap price, I don't think you'd have these opportunities, but you're obviously doing it correctly. Yeah, and that's been our focus from the very beginning. Back in 2007, I when I created this company, it was really my, my goal always to create a, a triple win where our operatives get a great wine at a great price, where the winery is represented fairly where they get a, a very positive review because remember we only sell wines that we absolutely love we reject plenty of wines and there's an ocean of wine available so when we put up a wine uh, it's because we absolutely adore it and because it's a, a great value for our customers so yeah we want the winery to win we want the consumer to win and of course we want to have an, a happy outcome and, and sell lots of wine excellent Tell me about the other spies who you work with now. Yeah, so the Wine Spies team has also really grown up over these years. Uh, the, the Wine Spies CEO now is Agent Crew. Uh, Agent Crew comes from, uh, he was a general manager for Deerfield Winery, where he ran the show over there for a number of years. And I, I tried over the years, we, we became good friends after having run a couple of wine offers together. And then I tried and tried recruiting him and, and getting him on board with the wine spies and was finally able to do that two years ago. I uh, put him in place as CEO and uh, the new curation agent is Agent Noir, who I told you about earlier. Agent Malbec is the guy that keeps the trains running. He makes sure that orders get out, that the wine is moving around, that the, you know, the wine gets uh, picked up from the winery timely and shipped out to our customers. And our newest addition is Agent Roan, and Agent Roan handles all of our customer outreach and customer care. And uh, gosh, in behind all of that, we have a, a team of, of programmers down in San Diego run by our very own Agent Q. Q Agent Q is the guy that, that makes all of these continuous improvements to the Wine Spice platform, and uh, we introduce features sometimes uh, daily, in fact pushing improvements. Oh, great. So you have a Q just like a MI5. Just like MI5 and James Bond, yes. <laughs> and you have industry professionals who do tastings with you to see which offering deserves to be presented on the website. We or at least we did pre-COVID. Uh, certainly the wines by the team itself still assembles and, and is able to taste wines. And if not together, they, they do it remotely now from their homes. Sure. Uh, once COVID is behind us, and hopefully it will be soon, then uh, we'll return to that. And yeah, we love doing those taste panels. One aspect that impresses me is the detail in the brief which you deliver to your operatives about the wine and the winery. Uh, you certainly do your share of investigation, no surprise. Yeah, you know, we really, that's something that we've done from the very beginning, and we really try hard to paint a, a full picture, tell a full story of the winery. Uh, every now and then we get a winemaker to do a, a little video for us as well. And, you know, it may be too much information for some people, but we hear over and over again from our operatives that they really appreciate the level of detail. It really helps people to get to know the story of the wine and the winery. And I think, you know, wine wine lends itself to, uh, you know, to storytelling so well. And mm -hmm. I think there's just so much richness of, of information and personality in, in every bottle of wine. Absolutely. Yeah, it's so well written. I've always been Thank impressed. You. Well, Thank I'm sure so I'm sure our listeners are intrigued enough now to wanting to know how they can become an operative for the Wine Spies and how can they do that? Yeah, so we we don't have a club model. It's very simple. You just come to the website. If you see something that you that you are intrigued by, you can just add it to your cart or to your locker. But those interested do have a way of signing up, and in that case, they get an email every day with the day's offering. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, they can go right to the homepage and, and sign up there. We'll, we'll send out a note every single day. And, you know, every now and then we, we send out some special notices. Like recently, we introduced a referral program, and that 
that allows you to give your friends a credit and you earn a credit when they sign up. Uh, we also have a contest that we just began running and the, the prize pool there is fantastic. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Um, I may hint that it, that it does contain one ultra incredible, ultra rare wine hmm. from a very well known winery. But I'll let, I'll let your listeners check it out for themselves. Well, you've intrigued me too. I'm going to check it out myself. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you do surround yourself with secrecy, don't you, Agent Red? I love that. We try to maintain our, our persona. You know, even after 13 years, uh, people in the wine trade who have never learned my real name uh, solely refer to me as Agent Red or, or just Red. <laughs> That's become my name. Even, even family members now call me Red. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> However, I was a bit surprised to see the video on your website, which actually shows you. And it wasn't just like the back of your head. You had to get a pretty good image of who you are and what you look like. Well, I've, I've been uh, coming out from the shadows, as it were. Now he's truly coming out of the shadows as we reveal who he is in association to an even more important project called Halo Life. Well, Agent Red, as we get into this next topic, you have allowed me to, as you said, out you as to who you really are, because this new project is very important and uh, you're very proud of it. So Jason Sieber is here it's to tell... It feels strange to, to use my real name. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're here to tell us about Halo Life, and they are Halo masks that uh, set a new global standard for comfort, style, and filter efficiency and protection, the most important part of it. Yeah, very well said. Um, you know, I I was in Bali uh, back in December and January. Uh, we spent the New Year there, and while I was there, I, I connected with an old friend of mine who, for the last four years, had been making masks for pollution protection, and he had come up with this really incredible design of these very stylish, very form-fitting masks with a proprietary filter. And that filter actually beats N95 and, and other filter standards by a pretty good margin. So it was wonderful to spend time with him and, and kind of revel in the success that he had had with that company and, and the mission that it had to protect people from the ravages of pollution. And, you know, pollution is actually uh, the number two killer in the whole world behind heart disease. It's kind of hard to believe. That is. Yeah. Uh, but pollution has killed more people, say, in the last 72 hours than COVID has in its whole existence. And that's really an alarming number when you think about it. Uh, pollution kills 500 people per hour. Wow. And it's mostly children and the elderly that suffer from respiratory disease um, as exacerbated and, and caused by pollution. So we, uh, we, we parted, I, I said goodbye, and my wife and I got on a plane and on the way back, our plane was routed through Wuhan, China. Yes. That was an unexpected stop. And we spent uh, like six hours in the Wuhan airport on January 9. And when we got back on January 10, we read in the news that there was a mystery virus that had originated in Wuhan. And authorities there were trying to figure out what it was. Wow. And uh, fortunately for us, we wore our masks, these very masks that uh, my friend had made. So we wore those for the, for the entire trip back. And uh, on, on the plane, you were wearing I don't know them? Any, on, the, on the plane, in the airport, the whole way through, you know, we had to take them off uh, at various checkpoints and such. But for the most part, we kept those masks on. <laughs> Fortunately. And, and then, then COVID hit. And at that point, I contacted my friend and I said, hey, we need to bring these masks to a global population. We need to, you know, just not just do them in Indonesia, but let's now. Let's now do them globally and let's stand up a, a company and, and get it going. And uh, the Indonesian government put a ban on the export of masks. So we did very quickly stand up a new company in the U.S. And manufacturing is now underway. And the Halo mask is now for sale at halolife.io. And that mask, the Halo mask, represents a real step change in, in mask technology particularly around the fit of the mask and the filtration. Again, the, the filter is a proprietary filter that we source from a company in New Zealand. Uh, we have exclusive rights to that filter material. And uh, yeah, we're, we're super, super happy that uh, we were able to get things going so quickly. I've assembled right. a real world-class team around 
around Halo Mask, and we are off to the races and doing our part now to restart the economy, to protect people, to, you know, just bring uh, a level of, of protection and, and, you know, even fashion to, to the mask business right. that it, just hadn't existed before. It is so important, too, right now. And, and the one thing that caught my eye on the website is the halo mask filters both ways. So if you're coughing or sniffing and you're in a close environment, uh, like on a bus or what have you, um, nothing becomes airborne from you. And so you're protecting the others and you're protecting yourself with these masks. Yeah, I mean, we all have a duty to protect each other during this crazy time. And yes, uh, the halo mask does provide that that sort of two-way protection. Jason, tell me about this uh, proprietary filter that, uh, I guess that includes the, the nanofiber? Yeah, it's a the nanofiber filter. It's a really interesting technology. The nanofilament is a single filament that's sprayed through a microscopic sized nozzle uh, and it's sprayed onto the filter substrate in like a long continuous string almost like a single string of spaghetti if you will Mm -hmm. and that spaghetti is is shot all over this filter and we actually spray 15 miles long um, 15 miles of this nanofilament per filter (laughs) Uh, there's enough material in a liter bottle of this of this polymer that we use that when sprayed through the nozzle could stretch all the way to the sun and back. It's that small. And wow. so by virtue of that, when you start to overlay all of this spaghetti, you get an incredibly tight weave that's also very, very breathable. So breathability is, uh, is something that's also a key feature of the halo mask. It's more breathable than, than most N95. And by the way, the N95 standard is now a 48 year old standard. Mm. So, you know, with this new nanotechnology, we have a, a filter that represents, you know, the absolute latest in filter technology. This image you have on your website, I am, you know, it must be uh, enlarged tremendously because you can see the fibers very easily. But the way you're talking about it, it's right. so microscopic. Yes. Um, and you said uh, yeah, so this, it, this is, I'm sorry, um, this is uh, washable so you can keep reusing it? Yeah, the mask itself is reusable and washable. The filters are replaceable. Okay. Um, you, you can take the filter out, wash the mask, and put the filter back in. You don't have to change the filter every time you wash the mask. Uh, the filter itself can last up to 200 hours. It sort of depends on the air quality where you live. And, and we'll have a, a tool that helps people keep track of, of when to change the filter material. So, oh, great. yeah, filter is also available for purchase on the site. So, you know, we're in, we're in talks with a number of larger retailers, and we are also talking with different organizations like sports teams and big retailers and, and other frontline workers to do custom versions of the mask. Mm, yeah. So, you know, imagine uh, your, your favorite retail store and every employee in that retail store with a, with a halo mask on and the company logo for that store on that mask. Uh, we really want to get frontline workers uh not back to work we want to get delivery drivers covered with masks i see so many people from just folks in the grocery store to delivery drivers to you know even healthcare workers that have these really poor yeah. masks that yeah. have obvious leaks of, of air through the top or through the sides and these are just not providing the level of protection that we need to to kill this virus and and by the way, you know, we're again we're a four year old company. You know, we're not we're not just a Johnny Come Lately here. We're really in this to see an end to COVID. We're not trying to capitalize or cash in on the on COVID. In fact, we're we're donating uh, a mask for every order that we take. We are donating a mask to a, a frontline worker, right. to an area of need, or to a charity. And our, our customers can actually choose where that donation goes. Um, it's really our hope that we put an end to COVID, that our mask makes some contribution to putting an end to COVID. And when COVID's behind us, and hopefully that'll be sooner than rather than later, then we will return our, our attentions to the pollution uh, protection problem. And of course, it also works, I would imagine, with wildfire smoke and volcanic eruptions, um, all of the Absolutely. things that are out there uh, these days. Yep. 
And they're so form fitting too. I mean, when I, I'm looking at the photos here of uh, the woman wearing one, and then it's it is it looks comfortable, but yet definitely covers up your uh, your mouth and nose region uh, very nicely. Yeah, and we've been testing them like crazy here in the U.S. Uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, critical industries here in America. My wife, for example, works for a local winery where she runs production. And uh, she wears a mask every single day, and she's able to wear it for the entire day without having to take it off. Uh, it doesn't fog her glasses like other masks. Oh, uh, that provides is such, an such issue. A, a snug fit, and it's so so comfortable and so breathable that the, the best thing to to wear hands down. That is uh, an important feature because you know I get tired of wearing a mask. You get the warmth from your breath, and uh, I wear reading glasses, and they do fog up. And my wife doesn't like to wear them, so comfort and not being bothered by the mask is tremendous. Yeah, this provides a, a, the most complete seal. You know, across the bridge of the nose, uh, there's a, a pad at the bridge of the nose. There's a, and a, a wire underneath that, that lets you adjust it, like a piece of metal that. That lets you get a really form-fitting, snug fit, and uh, yeah, even even with a beard, I have a beard, and uh, it has a chin strap that goes underneath, or at least a chin feature rather, that goes underneath that pulls the mask onto your face. The ear loops are adjustable, so again, it's uh, really one of the most advanced masks that mm-hmm. uh, it is the most advanced mask that we've ever seen. The cost is thirty-five dollars, which seems very reasonable for what it is being able to use it over and over again. And uh, yes. I invite my listeners to uh, check it out. Halolife.io is the uh, website. Yeah. And remember, for every purchase that is made through the Halolife.io website, we are donating a mask, and uh, your your listeners can choose where that donation is made. Oh, great. That's fantastic. Good for you guys. Well, Jason yeah. Sieber, nice talking with you again, and uh, it's nice to be able to use your real name for a change. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, and uh, I really enjoy your show, and it's good to be back on here with you. Okay, continued success to you in, in both realms here. Thanks very much. Be well. Check out halolife.oi, and I think you'll find their masks appealing, and they will keep you safer than any mask that's easy to wear. Plus, you'll be helping someone on the front lines receive one free of charge. That's a gratifying opportunity. Stay tuned. On the Wine Road Podcast continues after this break. Now, here's another Wine Uncorked. Recently, surveyors in the Valpolicella wine region, north of Verona, Italy, discovered pristine ancient Roman tiles buried underground, as reported by BBC News on May 27th. Interestingly, the tiled floor was found about three feet under a vineyard. Apparently, scholars first uncovered evidence of a Roman villa there more than a century ago. The current search has been underway for quite some time and experienced decades of failed attempts at finding the intricately designed stone mosaic floor. This is good news for archaeologists, although not sure how this will affect the vineyard owner. The vineyards in the Valpolicella region are some of the most prestigious in Italy. Technicians are still gently excavating the site to see the full extent of the ancient building. Surveyors are working with the owners of the vineyard and the municipality to, quote, identify the most appropriate ways to make this archaeological treasure hidden under our feet available and accessible, end quote. Images of the floor indicate how well preserved it is, and it's a spectacular site. You can see a link to photos on my website with this podcast on thewineroad.us. When you plant a vineyard, you never know what its roots will find. We are back on The Wine Road. I'm Jeff Davis. Now let's turn to a unique and lighthearted way of dealing with this COVID-19 era. Grant Long Jr. is a winemaker for A&R and Reverie Wines, They're highly acclaimed small production wines out of Napa Valley. But he recently got inspired to create another brand. It is certainly a a swift response to these, what I like to call, sobering times. Tell us what inspired your new brand and what it is exactly. Well, like so many people, this is definitely a brave new world. And um, being a small winery owner um, and faced with wineries being closed and a full staff that we wanted to keep employed, we had to kind of come up with creative ways to pivot in an industry that uh, 
has become kind of an old shoe for us and just realized that as, as everybody was kind of getting to that point of realization that life would, would eventually get back to some form of normalcy that putting a smile on people's face combined up with some wine drinking might be the solution to a multitude of problems. And the, uh, <laughs> right. the TP Reserve wine brand was born, um, both out of uh, kind of necessity uh, on our end as a small winery, but also out of um, the ability to bring a product to a place in the market that fits what everybody's looking for. So, yeah, so you call it TP Reserve, and on the label is? Toilet paper roll. Um, I know it's, uh, <laughs> it sounds like a strange thing to put on front of a, a bottle of wine, but uh, combining up the the fact that there has been a bit of Americana um, symbolism created during this time as toilet paper has been one of the things associated with the COVID or pandemic or, I guess, yeah. quarantine life that we now are living, um, I just started to notice that much of the lighthearted nature of called levity to things mm -hmm. seems to be associated around toilet paper and i felt like it was a great way for us to uh um, be able to create a, a a brand that could um help our wineries but also be part of the a time uh, you know wine for the moment yeah and provide them something that uh, they seem to be very passionate about uh, these uh, past few months Yes. You know, I want to ask you about something, what I think is the second most impressive thing that you did. When you came up with this idea, how soon did you get the name approved, get the bottle labeled and released to the market? You know, you would be surprised. Um, the words toilet paper and wine don't actually go together very often out there. So uh, <laughs> being able to come up with a, uh, a, a website and branding and everything... Um, didn't have the typical barriers of entry that you'd expect. Um, and having such a loyal set of followers through our other wineries, um, getting the wines out throughout the country um, to some of our supporters was actually not difficult either. So the the whole thing kind of came to fruition over a couple months. Yeah, that's pretty quick, doing a whole new brand. And as you mentioned, you also created a website around it. Yeah, I mean, what we realized was, you know, with our other wineries, a and and Reverie, you know, we're, we're such a, um, you know, focal point are built around the wineries that we know during this time that uh, most people are on their phones, most people are on their social media um, and website-based uh, purchasing that we would have to put together a, a plan and presentation for the wines that was a little different than our usual. And with the help of some really talented people, um, we were able to bring together um, what I think is a, it's a great presentation for a great product, um, but yeah. also something that people can bring, you know, again, a smile. I guess that's the closest thing I keep getting back to. It. Yeah. The ability to gift it, get a smile out of it while still drinking a great bottle of wine. You mentioned the uh, presentation. Yeah. So uh, when Julianne, your PR gal, reached out to me, uh, you know, I found it whimsical looking at the website and the, and the bottles. Uh, and honestly, I wasn't sure if I was going to promote it. But then I watched the video on your website that you and your team created, and it's less than a minute, but the effort that went into setting up the scene and the story that accompanied it is what convinced me to talk with you and promote your TP Reserve. Nicely done. Thank you. Um, yes, the uh, being uh, one of the younger uh, winery owners in the Valley, we've gone through different iterations of uh, of. I would call marketing or picture taking, and you always seem to find that um, that very classic shot of a winemaker walking down a row of vines and and looking off into the distance like they can see the future. Um, and I, I I myself have found myself in that same picture and just decided that the the comedy behind uh, trying to bring a smile to everybody's face with the uh, TP brand was to bring some of that that real Napa Valley feel with a little bit of levity and a little bit of comedy. Too. Yeah. So, yes, having the toilet paper um, rolls hanging from the vines uh, going down these mountain rows was a uh, was a fun fun endeavor. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure if I was going to mention exactly what it is, and we'll just kind of leave it at that. But it's something my listeners might want to look for and view. I'll, I'll probably have it on my Facebook page and certainly on my website as well uh, coming soon. So very nice. I almost see TP Reserve as not being so much a wine to buy and drink for yourself, although I'm sure it's very enjoyable, 
but more as a wine to give to a friend of yours who you know was a TP hoarder as a way of saying, here, since you were so anxious to put yourself before others, maybe you'll want this too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the brand itself, I mean, obviously coming from our backgrounds here in Napa Valley, we weren't going to put anything in a bottle that we couldn't be proud of and to be um, back behind. But having the um, access to some of the fruit sourcing that we had um, and some of the higher yielded, um, yields from the vintage, uh, we were able to put something together that I think combines both a, a value, um, a great product. Yeah, you sourced from uh, some top vineyards in Napa and El Dorado foothills regions for these wines. Yeah, we've had a really great background in these particular growing regions with both Reverie and in Air. And so being able to have access to some of it allowed for us to, to be able to be a little bit more quick or turnkey um, and being able to create them and bring them to fruition as fast as we did. You know, our, we have the most amazing team at our wineries that helped both in the cellar um, as well as on the creative side to help bring um, these wines literally to fruition overnight. Um, mm -hmm. And being able to have my staff employed and being able to have them doing things that bring a little bit of uh, normalcy back to their lives was an important motivator behind this brand as a company. Yeah, I want to get into more detail on that topic uh, in the next segment. But um, So your website is tpreservewine.com, and I understand it'll be in retail locations as well? Yes, I mean, at this point right now, we're, we're um, trying to find locations where people are would, would find you know a sense of humor involved in this and um, obviously, the response that we've gotten from those that have tasted the wine and had the wine has been really, really positive. So it's now it's just a matter of finding the, the right places for it to exist um, in the, over the next couple years or so. I need to mention, too, that partial proceeds from the sale of the TP Reserve wines will be donated to Napa Valley Food Bank. So nice move, Grant. Thanks. You know, the, the, at these times, obviously, um, food is one of those um, those things that people often forget about, but it's... Uh, even at our own dinner table, we will have our kids talk about what the things they're thankful for. And my son constantly always looks down at the plate and says, you know, I'm just really thankful for the food we have. And it's a constant reminder that uh, that's not necessarily a given for everybody. So wow. now the food bank does an amazing thing for our community. And we wanted to include it as part of the philanthropy aspect of the TP Reserve brand. That's great. Grant, let's talk about your life in the wine industry. Uh, what inspired you to make a barrel of wine when you were a teenager? You know, there's a there's a lot of dominoes that had to get into place for where we are today. And um, my one of my best friend's fathers was a home winemaker, and um, though my dad had a wine cellar growing up, wine was might as well have been a, a foreign import in the bigger picture of my life. And to see. Um, my friend's father making wine in the garage just it it opened up my eyes to something that i just really felt i never would be able to accomplish on my own and i can still remember the time i told my parents that i wanted to make wine in the garage and my dad lit up like a light bulb uh, <laughs> mom shook her head um, and it was this uh back and forth of whether or not this was a good idea or a bad idea um uh, recently over mother's day my mom laughed and said you know actually wasn't it, it turned out it's pretty good didn't it <laughs> yeah I'd say so. and yes you know 20 years later big right. difference <laughs> yeah so take us along that path that delivered you to where you are today you know after after that you know college was a short stint uh, never never actually made it through more than a couple of years and ended up back here in the valley both working for uh, different wineries and working under different mentors um, and each one of them along the way offered um knowledge and expertise and it really wasn't until um, I met Norm Kicken up at Reverie Winery on Diamond Mountain, the original owner um, and winemaker up there that some things changed for me and the doors opened to the business side of winemaking which was kind of my passion from the very beginning um, and that that was where a lot of opportunities were given to me, Norm's mm -hmm. um, tutelage in that aspect. He was a um, Fortune 1000 uh, CFO from New York and really understood the financial side of things and encouraged me to do something on my own. You would imagine most employers would, would not have had that stance, but he was a great guy. He is a great guy. I like Grant's business model of making small production handcrafted wine with the intention of hearkening back to early winemaking in Napa Valley. 
Yeah, I mean, my, I can remember as a kid, my father getting, you know, 80% of the gratification out of a bottle of wine was the story of where he was and who he met and where the wine came from and the story of the vineyard, all before a glass was even poured. Mm-hmm. And that story, you know, I don't want to say has been a little bit lost through the years as Napa has become more of a, a, a name. But those that make the pilgrimage to Napa and actually visit Napa Valley and meet the people behind these wines will always be able to take something home with them and be able to relive every time they pull a cork. And so that was kind of the, the purpose behind Anne Air and Reverie always being something that you had to make the pilgrimage to Napa, just like it was back in the 70s and 80s. And since we're on the topic right now, uh, which is kind of similar to how you named your wine, tell us what uh, Anne Air, what that means. Well, Anair is Gaelic or Irish in that sense for one man or individual, and it it really started off as the title of the business. I mean, I was the owner, winemaker, CFO, CEO, toilet cleaner, whatever it took <laughs> at that time. Um, and it was actually my mom that uh, that helped me with actually naming the brand itself. Uh, the crest on the bottle is uh, my grandfather's crest on my mother's side, the Hannigan clan. Nice. So it was also an ode to some family, some history. Even though I'm first generation owner and winemaker, it's a it's a constant reminder that our grandparents worked so much harder than we did. <laughs> we are so lazy compared to what they had to do. <laughs> no kidding. Um, so yeah. Well, you haven't expanded much beyond being one man because your crew is fairly small, isn't it? Yeah, I mean we have um, some of the most talented people that uh, have been part of what brought A and Air from a, a one man show into a, a very very grassroots local uh, business in all aspects. I mean, both wineries collectively, we've, we've been able to keep everybody employed, keep everybody, you know, being able to stay working during this time. And that, that was major, one of the major drives for the TP brand. I mean, it is a big change from what I'm used to, um, but also what our team is used to, but they were all on board recognizing that, you know, we had to be able to be glass half full and step outside of our comfort zone. Yeah, you operate in uh, in a means that my listeners have heard me talk about numerous times, and that's in a sustainable manner, which also includes how you treat your employees. So good for you for hanging on to your employees during this challenging time. It's it's a I mean this valley is an amazing place, but for a lot of people, it's 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 uh, more of a job versus a career. And I, I I told every single one of my amazing staff that I work with um, when they came on, like if you treat this as a career, I will treat your your salary and your employment as a career as well. And so we've we've always pushed very hard for benefits for everybody on the team. We've pushed to allow every single team member to make their own wine. You know, they all get to be able to create and go through the process of what it is like to have something that you created brought to fruition, meanwhile also being part of a such an amazing team as well. The kind of guy any of us would like to work for. Now, TP Reserve Wines is atypical of your a and Air wines in Reverie, too. Tell us about those uh, classic Napa Cabernets and blends that you make. Uh, well, a and Air, you know, came to fruition as a, as a passion project turned career turned family business. And mm-hmm. it was a, it's been a roller coaster. My wife um, uh, <laughs> referred to her, referred to me as her Yahoo husband, um, entrepreneur, and it's a it was really a, a factor of right place, right time with certain opportunities that were thrown our way that we just didn't squander. And um, as Anne Air kind of came to fruition and the different personalities of it came about, we turned to the mountains as a unique you know, style of wines. And so all the Anne Air wines are focused around the mountain, uh, AVAs of Napa Valley, Howl Mountain, Atlas Peak. Spring Mountain, Diamond, and Mount Veeder. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of the cornerstone of what we do there. And we have an amazingly loyal following of club members that support us through our allocation list. Um, when uh, Norm retired um, from Reverie and uh, the opportunity was given for me to buy the business from him, Reverie took on a completely different personality from a and as Norm had built a business around these single varietals single AVA driven wines and so we wanted to carry that torch forward in style but with kind of a different flair so um, stepping outside of the Napa Valley we, we turned to the foothills for our Tempranillo and our Barbera um, varietals that if you'd ask someone 10 years ago about many people wouldn't even know what they are now 
<laughs> they're becoming household names. Yeah, um, love those. Thank you, millennials, for that. <laughs> Yeah, you mentioned allocation list uh, for a and air and I guess Reverie too. But can the public come up and do an appointment tasting when the time is right? Yeah, I mean, once things open back up again, a and and Reverie have always been by appointment only. You know, that's just where we don't have a lot of marketing behind those brands. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it really is 100% word of mouth. As I said, going back to what it would have been like to come to Napa Valley in the 70s, 80s, you didn't exactly have a trip advisor. Um, right. option. So you ended up driving down dirt roads that a friend told you about, you know, make the left next to the big oak. And when you see the haystack, you know, you'll know you're there. <laughs> um, that's kind of exactly what a and and Reverie are. Um, so they would just to be a appointment only. Well, you know, judging by the photos on your website, the tasting room for a and is a beautiful open air mountain cabin. It looks very comfortable and relaxing and uh, has uh, an excellent view, and it is reaching out to me. I can't wait to uh, come up and see it. <laughs> well, the original tasting rooms of Napa Valley were living rooms, and that's kind of the, uh, the, the again, going back to the cornerstone of what we wanted it to yeah. have for an environment. Well, it seems like you've had a lot of, uh, whether you call it luck or serendipity, and you've taken advantage of everyone that has come your way. So congratulations on getting to this point. Trying every day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining me, Grant. Continued success. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. Yet another example of a thoughtful, genuine winemaker whom I so often come across. Find his other brands at anrwines.com. That's A O N A I R wines.com, reveriewine.com, and don't forget tpreservewine.com. As I mentioned, you can find the video Grant and his team created for TP Reserve Wine associated with this podcast at onthewineroad.com or .us. It is worth watching. You can also find my past interviews there. I'm on Instagram and rarely on Twitter at JD Wine Road. All the music on today's show was sourced from Firstcom. Be sure to subscribe to On the Wine Road podcast so you don't miss a minute of the informative topics and guests. Thank you for joining us today. Continue to be COVID-19 smart and stay healthy. I'll catch you next time. I'm Jeff Davis.